Hi, and welcome to Kenna Basics. Today, we learn how to make rosin lozenges. Rosin lozenges are cannabis-infused honey, lemon, ginger, hard candies, or cough drops that can be used for medicinal or recreational cannabis use. They use rosin-pressed wax or keef to infuse the cannabis. It has only four ingredients, it's all natural and healthy, so let's get started. Here's what you need to make rosin lozenges. First, you need a half a cup of honey. You can use raw honey or regular store-bought honey. You need two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice, one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger root, and one gram of cannabis rosin pressed wax, or one to two grams of keef. I do not recommend using DHO or butane extracted hash oils for this or any other recipe. Because making hard candy can be a very time sensitive endeavor, you do need to make sure that you have all your ingredients ready to go. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and squeeze out our two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Make sure you strain out all the seeds and pulp and have that ready to go. And also you wanna go ahead and prepare your ginger. Again, we're using fresh ginger. And if you get organic, that's even better. But you wanna go ahead and make sure that you peel off the skin and then use a grater and we're gonna grate, finely grate about a teaspoon of the fresh ginger root. And then it'll also be very helpful if you go ahead and pre-measure out your half a cup of honey. Again, I said you could use raw honey here or you can use just regular store-bought honey such as we're using here. But you need a half a cup of honey and you need to have all your ingredients ready to go before we move on to the next step, which is to put a small saucepan over medium-high heat. And then we're gonna combine in all of the honey as well as the lemon juice and the ginger. And we're gonna bring that up over medium to medium-high heat. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to sort of boil out the water and some of the other impurities and cook down the ginger. So after we've combined all of our ingredients in our pan, we're gonna go ahead and give that a little bit of a mix and let them combine together. And then as the heat comes up, we're also going to make sure that we have our candy thermometer available. Okay, as the heat brings up a little bit, you'll, the honey will melt and you'll be able to incorporate those ingredients together. Make sure that you have your candy thermometer ready. And a candy thermometer, you need to make sure that it's the kind of thermometer that goes up well over 300 degrees but you're gonna to want to make sure that you carefully monitor because what's gonna happen is that once you get up to about 212 degrees or boiling for water, we're gonna start boiling out the water from the honey. And there's also water in the lemon juice that's gonna boil it out and condense down the honey the honey and the lemon flavors both. But what's, what happens is that a lot of foam occurs when this happens. You need to be right beside it and make sure that you have a pan that has uh, tall enough sides to accommodate uh, at least a triple of the depth in foam. And then uh, as the foam gets to the top of your pan, you need to pull it off the heat and let the foam subside. It just takes a few seconds for the foam to subside and then you can put it back on the heat. Uh, But like I said, just be there with it because this is going to to occur several times. But over time, as the water boils out, it's going to foam less and less. And then you can uh, bring your heat up to high and go to 295 degrees Fahrenheit. And you want to be very precise about that temperature. Uh, Leaving a little bit room there, if it gets up to 300 degrees, you're fine. Don't go over 300 degrees, but 295 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit should be perfect. If you don't have a candy thermometer, you can also do this by having a cup of ice water available and take some of the candy when you think it's getting close and drop it in and let it harden in the ice water. And if it hardens into a brittle hard candy, then you've reached the right temperature. And we're getting real close. You can see it's really darkening too. You don't want to go so far also that you burn and uh, get a really bitter flavor. So you want to be really careful. You monitor your temperature and when it gets to 300 degrees or 295 degrees Fahrenheit, pull it off the heat. And immediately it's going to start to cool once it's pulled off the heat. So we're going to act fast. Make sure you still monitor the temperature when it gets to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to add in our rosin or our keef. What we're doing here is we're we're using that temperature so that one, it'll melt into there and be easy to mix, but also because we're decarboxylating or still activating the cannabis. Rosin pressed does use heat and pressure, so it may possibly be decarboxylated, but we're using this heat just to make sure that we've activated our cannabis. And if you're using keef, then that's gonna be necessary also to activate the cannabis. So starting at 250 degrees, and then as it cools over the next couple of hours, we'll be decarboxylating the remaining cannabis. Well, once you've added in and mixed in your cannabis, you're going to now uh, pour your candy into the candy molds. The video always slows us down a little bit, and so uh, the candy's a little thicker than I would like for it to bend when it poured in the molds here. It would have poured a little more evenly if I had got used it a little bit hotter when I poured it into the molds. 
but that's okay. And uh, those little drops that I put on parchment paper would also have come out a little bit more circular and nice. Uh, so just make sure that you move fast enough when you're doing your candies. But after about two hours, and you don't need to put this in the fridge or anything, just let this cool on the counter. After about two hours, your hand candy will harden into a hard, rigid candy. You'll be able to pop those out of the molds with no problem. And this candy can be really sticky, so you might want to uh, coat it in uh, powdered sugar, which will help prevent them from sticking together in whatever storage container you put them in. And uh, if you don't have powdered sugar, you could also use crystal sugar, or you may want to anyway, because it gives it a nice, uh, kind of a cool looking coating there. And it also adds some sweetness to the candy, which can be uh, a little bit uh, better because of the lemon and the ginger. But these are really good and they're, they're, uh, the flavor of these is not so much like a sweet candy, so much as more as like a lozenge. And you get the, uh, the lingering numbness from the uh, ginger, they're really good. This episode is brought to you by the Rough House Studios Smoke Shop, selling raw rolling papers, accessories, much more at great prices. Save 10% off everything with the code CANABASICS at roughhousestudios.com. I do hope you enjoyed this video or this recipe for how to make rosin lozenges. If you did, please hit the like button. And please also subscribe to Rough House Studios for more cannabis culture videos made just for you. This is Matt at Rough House Studios. Thanks for watching. Thank you.